another super science Saturday with me, Ashley, the wildlife host. Get ready because this month we're going on a fossil dig. What are fossils? Fossils are our chance to take a glimpse into the recent and even ancient past. People have been taking note of fossils since before the common era. Since the beginning of modern paleontology, or the study of fossilized remains, in the 1700s, we have been able to identify hundreds of thousands of extinct species. These species have come to define different periods, such as the immense diversity of sea life in the Cambrian, dinosaurs in the Triassic, and the rise and domination of mammals in how they form. Fossilization typically occurs when a living organism dies and is covered in sediment before it slowly decays. Over time, the sediment becomes very compressed or packed down, leading to the creation of rocks. Usually at this point, only the bones remain, and they too eventually break down, leaving a mold of the skeleton in the stone. Over time, as water seeps into these molds, the minerals it carries gets deposited, and what remains is called a fossil. Of course, this process doesn't work for all types of species. Most fossils of animals, like slugs for example, aren't found in the fossil record. However, sometimes we get really lucky and we catch up a soft bite species is captured. The most famous example of this are the soft body animals found in the Burgess Shell in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. This discovery brought to light the many invertebrates found in, on, and near the ocean floor during the Cambrian period over 500 million years ago. Where are they found? Fossilized remains have been found all around the world. Due to the shifting of tectonic plates that the Earth's crust is made of, lots of physical changes have occurred since the Earth formed. This has caused tremendous changes in the landscape. Some areas that used to be the sea are now the mountains. There are many businesses that allow you to dig for your own fossils in areas known to be rich with species. You can ask an adult family member to help you search online to see if any of these establishments are near you. What is a living fossil? While well, we usually think of fossils as belonging to a species that has died, did you know there are living fossils as well? Although it's not a scientific or technical term, this phrase is come to mean the following. An organism that has remained essentially unchanged from earlier geological times and whose closest relatives are usually extinct. Well, at least that's the definition according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary. This is not to suggest that no form of evolution has occurred. Instead, the changes have been slower than the normal rate of evolution, as well as being very slight. Surprisingly, living fossils can be found across many taxonomic classes. Taxonomy is the system we use to classify organisms and group them with other organisms they are related to. Today, we're going to learn about some of the most interesting living fossils that can still be found. Pelicans are seabirds that are known for their unusual beaks. You may remember seeing one in Finding Nemo. I love that movie. The lower portion of their beak is large and stretchy, extending to hold a fish they gulp up at sea. As it turns out, the adaptation has been serving these birds well for the last 30 million years. A fossil found penguin in the geological epoch, or time period called the Oligocene, was found in southeastern France on the continent of Europe. This find was incredibly rare and revealed that pelicans at this time were about the same size as modern pelican species and had the same specialized beak for fishing. Apparently, it was just as good of a tool then as it is now. The steel can may be the most famous example of a living fossil. These fish were thought to be extinct for the last 66 million years. 66 million years. Only known by the fossil record in one specimen caught in 1938. However, additional populations of these rare fish were found in the late 90s. It's not hard to figure out how these fish stayed off the sonar for so long. Despite their large size, one of the individuals caught in the 90s was tall as me, just under five and a half feet. But they lived in the deep ocean and were called the thalassophones. That's an area about 500 to 800 feet below the water surface. They usually inhabit rocky cliffs and have been found in marine caverns just hanging out. Not 
so easy to find. Look at this little tour car. It looks like a cute lizard, right? Actually, it's no lizard at all. This species is a long species in its reptilian order, which is separate from lizards. These small reptiles have been ranging the planet for the last 250 million years and have recently been found to be the slowest to evolve compared to lizards and snakes. They are only found in New Zealand and hold special value to the indigenous or native people on the island, the Maori. They regard these ancient reptiles as the guardians of knowledge. Have you ever watched Arthur on PBS? I know I have. Although he doesn't really look like one, he's an aardvark. He's a funny looking mammal with the snout of a pig and the diet of an anteater. Like a tulip bar, it is the only living member of its order. These nocturnal animals are found throughout the continent of Africa in a variety of habitats. The oldest known aardvark fossil is 5 million years old and was found in Kenya. Some aardvark fossils have even been found in Europe. I guess they're used to actually be around a lot. Dingo trees, otherwise known as native bear trees, are recognizable for their fan-shaped leaves. So recognizable that if you could travel back in time 270 million years to the Permian period, you'd be able to identify it. Luckily for us, we don't need a time machine to glimpse the dingoes of the past, because we have impression fossils of the leaves. This threatened species is native to China and has been cultivated and is now found around the world. It's also recognizable for its less than pleasant smell. Apparently, <laughs> they smell like vomit. Ooh. I wonder if that was also a trait passed down through its ancestors. The list of living fossils is longer than we have time for today. But if you're interested in learning more about these creatures, please check out the Fat Mountain Museum's website and you can also do a quick search of Google. I really hope you enjoyed this video today and I'll see you next month for another Super Science Saturday. Thank you friends, bye.